In this video, I'm just going to show you the best way to retouch your photos using the frequency separation and the mixer brush. Hi guys, my name is Eustace and if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe and smash that bell icon so that when I put up my next video, you will be notified. Let's do this. This photo was shot by Fred, an amazing photographer. I'll put the link to his Instagram account in the description below. So let's start. I'm just going to fix a few things before we proceed with our retouching. I'm going to go on the background image and then I'm going to make a copy of this background image. I'm going to hold control and then place J on the keyboard. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to place minus on the keyboard. I'm going to hold control plus T to free transform the image. I'm going to scale this photo just a bit. I'm going to left click and then I'll drag it up. And then I'm going to place enter on the keyboard. I'm going to zoom it in. I'm going to go on this layer. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select convert to smart object. Uh, whatever adjustments I'm going to make to this photo, I can go back and change those adjustments. So the reason why I've just converted this photo into a smart object. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to filter and then I'm going to select liquify. So I'm going to go on these tools and then I'm going to select this icon, the forward warp tool. I'll make the brush a little bit bigger using the brackets on the keyboard like this. And then I'm going to left click here and odd, and then I'm going to drag it out like that. I'm going to drag this part out like that. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to zoom it in. So I'm going to left click and odd here, and then I'm going to drag it out like that. Left click and odd, and then drag it out. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to left click and odd, and then I'll push it in. Like that. And then I'm going to click OK. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold Control plus Shift plus Alt plus E on the keyboard to make a visible stamp layer. I'm going to hold Control plus on the keyboard to zoom it in like this. And then I'll move it like this side. And then I'm going to fill in these patches. I'm going to go to my tools here and then I'm going to select the patch tool. I'm going to make a selection like this. And then I'm going to replace this part with this part. So I'm going to drag it down like this. I'm going to make a selection like this and then I'm going to drag it this side like this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sample this and paste it here. I'm going to go to my tools here and then I'm going to select the cron stamp tool. I'm going to go on brushes here and then I'm going to select the hard brush. Left click to select. I'm going to make the brush just a little bit smaller and then I'm going to odd odd and then I'll just left click here and then I'm going to left click here. So I'm going to zoom out, control minus on the keyboard. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean this part. I'm going to go to my tools here and then I'm going to select the pen tool here. I'm going to make a point somewhere here and then I'm going to make another point somewhere here and then I'm going to go back to my tools here. On the pen tool, I'm just going to light click so that I can see other pen tools that I can use. So I'm going to select the curvature pen tool here. I'll make a point here and then I'll push it in like this. And then I'm going to go back to my tools. I'm just going to light click on the pen tool and then I'm going to select the pen tool and then I'm going to make a point somewhere here and then I'm going to go back to the pen tool and then I'm going to select the curvature pen tool. I'll make a point in the middle and then I'll push it in like that. Select the pen tool. And then I'm going to make another point here. And then I'm going to go back to the pen tool. And then I'm going to select the curvature pen tool. I'll make a point and then I'll push it in like that. So this is the easiest way you can do this. Let me zoom it in. And then I'll make a point here. And then I'll make another point here. I'm going to go to the pen tool. Then I'll select the pen tool. And then I'll make a point here. Make a point here. And then I'm going to make another point somewhere here. And then I'm going to go to the pen tool. Then I'm going to select the curvature. I'll make a point in the middle and then I'll push it out like that. I'm going to go back to the pen tool. I'm going to make a point somewhere here. And then I'm going to go back to the pen tool, curvature, and then I'll push it out like this. And then I'll make a point there. 
And then I'm going to go back to the pen tool and then I'll select the curvature. I'll make a point in the middle and then I'll push it out like that. And then I'm going to like click and then I'm going to select make selection here. I'm going to use the radius of zero and then I'm going to just click OK. So I've made the selection. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to my tools here and then I'm going to select the clone stamp tool. And then I'm going to go on top here and then I'm going to select the soft round brush. Inside my selection, I'm going to add odd and then I'll sample this part and then I'll just paint this side. So that we can have a smooth, a soft, smooth transition. I'm going to place M on the keyboard and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to select deselect. I'm going to do the same thing that I've done here on this part. I'm going to do the same thing that I've done here even on this part. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove some of these blemishes. I'm going to go to my tools here, then I'm going to select the patch tool. I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to select this and then I'll drag it down. Uh, I want to replace it with this clean part. I'm going to let go, sample like that, we'll drag and then let go. I'm going to zoom out. So the next thing that I'm going to do now, I'm going to make the frequency separation layers. I'm going to go on this layer. I'm going to make two copies. I'm going to hold Control plus J on the keyboard. Control plus J on the keyboard. And then I'm going to double click on this layer. I'm going to name it color slash low frequency. And then I'm going to double click on this layer. And then I'm going to name it textures slash high frequency. I'm going to disable the texture layer. And then I'm going to select the color layer. I'm going to go to filter. And then I'm going to select the blur. And then I'm going to select the Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag the radius value to 0 0.1. I'll start pushing it up until I stop seeing the textures, but I can see the features of our face. So I'm going to select the radius of 7. And then I'm going to select the texture layer. I'm going to enable it. I'm going to click on this eyeball. And then I'm going to go to image. And then I'm going to select apply image. I'm going to change these settings. On the layer, I'm going to select the color stroke, low frequency here. On the channel, RGB. And then blending option, I'll change it to subtract, opacity 100%. So this one, I'm not going to check it. Even this one, I'm not going to check it. Scale, I'll use the maximum scale of two. Offset, I'll set it to 128. Invert, I'm going to uncheck this. And then I'm going to click OK. On blending option here, I'm going to select the linear light. I'm going to select the texture layer. And then I'm going to hold control. And then I'm going to select the low frequency. And then I'm going to drag this to this folder here. And then I'm going to double click on this folder. And then I'm going to name it frequency separation. When I disable this, I'm supposed to see the original photo. When I enable this, I'm supposed to see the original photo. If you don't want to make the frequency separation layers, I'm going to put my frequency separation action in the description. You can just download it and use it for free. So let's proceed with our retouching now. So the next thing that I'm going to do now, I'm going to remove the blemishes. I'm going to go to my tools here, and then I'm going to select the clone stamp tool. And then I'm going to go to the frequency separation folder. I'm going to open it. And then I'm going to select the texture layer. The opacity, I'll leave it the way it is. The flow, I'm going to leave it the way it is. On sample here, I'm going to select the current layer. I'm going to zoom it in a bit. So I'm going to make the brush bigger than this pimple. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard, select the clean part, left click to sample that clean part, then paint on the blemish or the pimple that you want to remove. Repeat this process until you remove all the blemishes or the pimples in your image. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So let me disable the texture layer. Let me just click on this eyeball. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to make these colors in the color layer to just blend. I'm going to do that using the mixer brush too. So let me zoom out a bit. 
I'm going to go to my tools here and then I'm going to select the mixer brush. Let me select the color layer. So these are my settings. So if this icon is checked, if it's like this, just click on it to uncheck it like this. What I want is when I'm mixing the colors, when I stop painting, I want the brush to clean itself. It's why I'm going to check this. If it's like this, light click on it to check it. Here I'm going to leave it on custom. Wet, I'm going to set it at 20%. Load, I'm going to set it at 30%. Mix, I'm going to set it at 90%. Flow, I'm going to set it at 30%. So sample all layers, I'm not going to check it. So these are my mixer brush settings. So when you're mixing using the mixer brush, the moment you just left click with your mouse or the moment you just place your pen on the Wacom tablet, it means you've sampled that color on that specific place. You're telling Photoshop that this is the color that you want to mix. So when you left click on a specific place, don't let go of that click, just hold it and then keep mixing like that. When you're done mixing that part, that's when you let go like that. And then you move to another place, you left click and hold and then you mix that place. When you're done, you let go. You select another place, you left click and hold, mix that place, and then when you're done, let go, and then keep doing that process. Let me undo this, Control Z1, Control Z2, Control Z3. Again, when you're mixing, mix according to the shape of the place that you're mixing. So if I'm mixing this side, I'm going to drag my mouse this side, and then I'm mixing like that. Let me undo this. So I'm going to go on top here, I'm just going to select the soft round brush. So another thing that you can do to guide you with the mixing, just go to adjustment layer on this circle and then select the black and white adjustment. I'm going to drag this. I'm going to put it here on top. I'm going to push the reds down like this. And then I'm going to push the yellows this side. I'm going to push the reds this side. This is going to guide me with the mixing. I can see I need to blend these colors and then I also need to blend these colors. I need to even blend this part. If you trust your eyes that much, you can just mix like this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go to my actions. I'm going to use my dodging and burning checker. I'm going to put it on top here. It's in my retouching actions pack. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in my retouching actions pack. So I'm going to close this. And then I'm going to open the dodging and burning checker. And then I'm going to select the curves. Just going to push it up like this. I'm going to push it down. So I'm going to close the dodging and burning checker. I'm going to select the color layer. And then I'll start mixing. Click here. And then I'll mix the colors like that. Click, mix. When I'm done, I let go. Click, mix. When I'm done. I let go. So I click, then I mix. Keep doing that. So mix according to where the colors are. So when, when you're mixing the highlights or the brighter parts, just mix the brighter part. When you're mixing the darker part, just mix the darker part. So keep doing that. You mix when you're done, you move to another place. So I'm going to disable the dodging and burning checker, and then I'm going to enable the texture layer. And then this are before. These are after, these are before, these are after. So I'm going to proceed with the, with the mixing. Uh, this time I'm not going to use the dodging and burning checker. Just keep mixing the colors like that. I odd. Move down here. So these are before, these are after, these are before, these are after. So I'll make the brush a little bit bigger and then I'll keep mixing. 
let me disable the texture layer so that I can see what's happening. Let me zoom out. And then I'm going to enable the texture layer. So this is our before, this is our after, this is our before, this is our after. So this is how you can retouch your photo using the frequency separation and the mixer brush. You're not supposed to end here. You can do the dodging and burning. You can do the color grading. If you want to learn the best way to do the dodging and burning, you should check this video on top. And if you want to learn how to retouch using my retouching actions pack, you should check this video down here. I'll see you in the next one.